Hey guys, it is time for a couple more AMA questions because we are between series and I didn't really have time to record anything last night. So, we are going to hit maybe, I don't know, 8, 9, whatever. There's I have the questions written down already, but I didn't number them, so we're going to hit however many questions I have written down. Alright, let's do this. What are your thoughts on esports, and do you wish you were part of them? I am an absolutely huge fan of StarCraft II esports. I've been watching them for almost 12 years now. My first memory of StarCraft II was from Day 9's King of the Beta Tournament. I've been hooked for the entire time, except a little bit of Heart of the Swarm. So why am I not a part of that? Well, as my viewership started to grow, I had to figure out exactly which direction I wanted to take things. Where I had potential, and where there was an opening in the market. Because StarCraft II is old, its esports scene is not growing. It's not shrinking either much, it's just mostly stagnating. And because StarCraft II Esports has existed for so long at this point, there's a large number of very competent creators who are working, but almost entirely, in StarCraft II Esports. There isn't much room for more people. This means that most likely, if I attempted to enter the Esports world of StarCraft II, one of two things would happen. If I were successful, I'd be pushing out one of these people who I have a lot of respect for, and there wouldn't be any more jobs for them. That would effectively be ruining someone's career in order to push my own. Or, what is more likely, is that these people with a huge amount of experience and have been working in the industry for a long, long time are known to be good, are known to be professional and respectful, able to get all this stuff done, they're just part of it, they would just win if I had to compete against them. Neither of those are great for me, so I decided that I would continue my focus on things that other creators weren't working on. Stuff like the campaign, co-op, challenge runs, speedrunning, all that kind of stuff I thought was a lot of untapped potential in StarCraft too. And I find it really fun. This solution makes it a win-win for basically everybody involved. Hopefully the StarCraft scene grows because of what I do and increases the visibility and demand for their esports products. Now, if another game were to come out and I fell in love with it, I absolutely would try to get in on the ground floor of that esports scene. At that point, it's just a meritocracy, and I think that if I started out on the same level as everyone else, I might have a decent shot. What do you think is most different about your communities? Discord, Twitch, YouTube, etc. I don't know. Gaming is a thing I traditionally have done by myself or with real life friends. I've never been part of a gaming community larger than a raiding guild back in WoW, so I honestly don't know what other Discords, Twitches, or YouTube communities look like for the most part, and I think I'm okay with that. The reason I brought this question up, even though I don't know the answer, is honestly because I'd be kind of interested in hearing what your guys' opinion are. Do I do anything special? Do I do anything particularly well? Is there things that I should be doing that work really well for other creators? I don't know. And I'm always down to hear some advice. I'm not going to copy what other people do. I'm going to take my own path, but, but I am interested in hearing your opinion on it. What do you like about each platform, such as Twitch, YouTube, etc.? On Twitch, I like the instantaneousness of what goes on. And the lower standards of quality are nice as well. Most Twitch streams are, like, really boring. So just getting on with it and doing things is often enough to set yourself apart there. For the archives, I love how the conversations people have are a lot more in-depth than on Twitch. Where Twitch is very short bursts of comment activity, the ability to have longer and more complicated discussions in YouTube comments, I know, right? But seriously, people say some pretty interesting, profound, and very thoughtful things about game design, balance, all that kind of stuff, what they like, what they don't like, in YouTube comments, because they have the time to actually sit down and think it out, and there's a relatively good chance that what they say will actually get read, as opposed to on Twitch, where any block of text is going to be knocked off so quick no one will be able to see it. And for the Giant Grant Games channel, I like being able to create things that are evergreen. Evergreen content being stuff that people can enjoy a year from now, a decade from now even. The more high effort videos definitely have more staying power. It's very easy to feel on the archives and on Twitch that my content is very ethereal. Once it's out there, I don't really have the luxury to think about it. I have to go full steam ahead on whatever is next. The higher effort main channel videos feel more permanent to me. And I think it's very important to have a feeling that you are creating something that does have permanency, that does have the ability to impact people later down the road, even if it's just kind of dumb gaming content or whatever. What unit is your favorite to use? I love the Blink Stalker so much. It just is the epitome of always more potential to improve with it. There is no such thing as perfect Blink Stalker micro. Not just in fights, but out of fights, their movement, their manipulation, being able to get from point A to point B to point C, 
in ways that other units cannot. Being able to time out when you want to blink, where you want to blink, it is so complicated. There is always so much you can look at and go, oh, I could have improved this and this and this and this and this. And I love that feeling. I don't think any other unit in the game truly captures that feeling for me. They're cool. How's your rivalry with Giant Grandpa going? <laughs> so there's... I can't believe someone remembers that. That is so funny. Uh, I was complaining at one point. I was... I don't remember if it was Twitch Tracker or Social Blade. One of those, like, you look at your metrics websites. Every time that you started going Giant G to look it up, Giant Grandpa would pop up. And he's just some guy with a Twitch account that's, like, never streamed or anything. And I have... It's, I just, I've looked at his account so many times because I would hit giant G enter on the other sites. It will go to me, but on this one site, it's just like, okay, it's time for giant grandpa. Uh, so uh, what I'm saying is that he's currently winning. Do you like yogurt? And if so, what is your favorite kind? Yeah. So this is really weirdly topical. I've started eating yogurt recently. I don't, well, traditionally I didn't particularly enjoy yogurt. However, I recently have been getting better at mixing it with things to make it more palatable. Uh, I only really eat Greek yogurt. I don't think that any other type of yogurt is very good. But I like to, for example, mix 50-50 pesto and yogurt to make a creamier pesto and then use that as a dressing on salads. I often just put it in Tupperware and shake it around until you get some on the leaves. And that way you don't have to eat that much pesto, which would be way too much pesto. And instead, you get to dilute it with something else while retaining the flavor. So, you know what? A couple weeks ago, I would say that yogurt sucks. And now I'm going to say that it is an ingredient that can be used for some really cool things. Which run did you enjoy completing the most? I was a big fan of Twitch Trolls Grant because it was impossible to fail. And that was really, really different for me. Due to the nature of how it worked, where people were donating in order to aggressively troll me, if I was able to overcome the hurdles that they were setting for me, then I felt like a legend. It was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I managed to overcome the 15 Taldorim motherships, nukes flying everywhere, and a thousand invisible cows. And if I died, then the people who were actively paying to troll, well, they feel like they were successful and they're willing to dip into the pot once again. And then all of that money going to fund all of these amazing campaigns, it was so wildly successful beyond my wildest dreams. I really feel like we were able to take that and every other thing that we've built as a result of that money, which includes real scale, which is starting at this time slot tomorrow, is going to effectively be a direct part of that. And as we release more and more things that I enjoy, all of, not all of that enjoyment, but some of the enjoyment for every single one of them is going to go back to Twitch Trolls Grant. As time has gone on as a content creator, I've found that I really enjoy creating tangible things. So, you know, there's not that many challenge runs left in StarCraft that I could possibly be doing. And as I was looking around to do potentially other stuff, you know, I moved into Warcraft 3 for a bit for some Deathless. But then I started the path of creation and that really felt good to me. Being able to create, design something like real scale or design something like Nightmare Edition, and then properly compensate these amazing modders to actually make the stuff, so it's a win-win for everybody. It just, it feels a little more important than what I was doing before. And I've been kind of lacking that feeling of importance for a while now. I actually talked with a very, very kind larger YouTuber who has been offering me guidance about this feeling that as a gaming content creator, the things that I create have no intrinsic value, which obviously is not entirely true, right? So I create things and that impacts people in different ways. Hopefully I can get people thinking about stuff like game design, critical thinking skills, uh, the importance of being the most persistent little person you can. <laughs> These are all important things to drive into people because I very much so believe that they are valuable and true. But at the same time, like, I used to work with kids. And when you can see your efforts in helping a kid go from being a dumb blob of meat into what is effectively a little person that might actually become a big competent person at some point, that has a huge amount of value to you. As, like, it's so obvious that you are adding something to the world. And my very quick an unexpected transition into content creation really kicked that 
out from under me. And I was lacking that feeling for a long time. But the ability to create anything has really, it hasn't filled that gap. But it's definitely helped me realize some of that feeling once again. And as the future continues, I'm going to keep looking for new and new ways to give back to these communities and help build them up as partially thanks for everything they've done for me and partially just because I find it very enjoyable. I really like being constructive. I like building. I mean, I was a big Lego fan when I was a kid and I guess I still am. Well, that was a lot of rambling. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a good time listening to this at this time slot starting tomorrow it is going to be Heart of the Swarm Real Scale. It is quite a doozy. And of course, Nightmare Edition is going to continue on after that. If you have not checked out the Giant Crank Games Discord, we need you there. The voting for, oh, what is it called? Legacy of the Meme has started. People have submitted some insane ideas, I assume. I haven't actually looked at them, but Ace has told me that there is uh, a lot of very bad ideas and some really, really good ones for remodding the entire Legacy of the Void campaign with units designed by you guys. The voting is underway, so all you have to do is join the Giant Crank Games Discord, head to the Legacy of the Meme section, click on the voting stuff, and vote in the Google Forms. It's easy, it's free, and it's anonymous. We don't even get to steal your bitcoins or whatever. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Peace.